Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design by looking at timers. At this point, we have looked at the second kind of timer feature that we have on the MSP430, which is a timer compare. And in this video, we are going to do an example that shows how to use it to generate a very precise timing event. Okay, so here is the task before us. <clears throat> before, we were kind of limited in terms of how often an event could happen because we were using timer overflow. So we would have to let the timer go all the way up to its two to the n value. If it, we left it at two to the 16, so it'd be two to the 16, then roll over, two to the 16, then roll over. And we had a little bit of adjustment capability. We could change it to two to the eight or two to the 10, but we had this very granular approach to setting the amount of time between events. With a timer compare, <clears throat> we can figure out a value that we want the timer to, to count up to before it triggers an event and rolls back over. And that gives us, this, gives us the ability to say, I'm gonna use time as the value to start. So I'm gonna decide the time, and then I'm going to choose the number of counts, okay? I'm gonna choose the number of counts before the event happens, okay? All right, so let's take it. Let's remind ourselves how this how this works. You have compare registers, and you put a value into the compare register. They're called CCRs, <clears throat> and when you put something into these registers, what's going to happen is that when these are enabled, the counter will count up to that value, and when it reaches that value, it will trigger a flag. Now CCR zero. And this is how you almost always do it. You use CCR0 to set the maximum. It has a special feature that if you put the counter into up mode, you put the timer into, into up versus continuous, then the value that you insert into CCR0 will serve as the maximum value before the timer triggers the event and it'll start over. It does not keep counting up to two to the end. It will go up to whatever value I put into CCR zero and then roll over. <clears throat> it will continue to count. It will absolutely continue to count, but it will not go to just two to the end and roll over. It will go to the value I choose and roll over. Okay, so that's what we're gonna use to define a precise timing event. All right, so here's our task. Let's toggle LED one again every 0.5 seconds. Okay, so now this is different because if you think about our equation, we have the delta t, which is the time elapsed, is always equal to the period of the clock times the number times the number of counts. But we are now trying to find the number of counts to produce the timing event. And so we are going to plug in 0.5 as our desi desired time elapse, and then we we are going to choose whatever clock gets us a reasonable, you know gets us in the ballpark, and then we determine the number of counts. That number of counts is what we put into TB0, CCR0. <clears throat> and again, let's just use TB0, TB timer B0. This is where you will notice that when you have whatever time you choose here, you're going to have to make a decision whether you use A clock or SM clock. If you use things that are very slow or relatively slow, like on the order of seconds, <clears throat> you're going to want to use a clock because it's slow enough that your count value you're going to calculate is going to be reasonable. Okay. Uh, if you have something that's quick, like you're going to be generating something every millisecond, you're going to want to use SM clock because SM clock is faster. And then, you know, it it's, gives you a reasonable count. So you're going to notice that if you try to do something very, very long, like 10 seconds, you can't use SM clock because it's too fast. And so you kind of have to play around with the values. For this example, let's say that we use a clock and no dividers. If we plug this in here, I plug in 0.5 as the time that I want between events, and then I plug in 1 over 32k as the as the to get the frequency and or excuse me, the period, and I solve for the number of counts, I get 16,384. That means if I put 16,384 into the CCR0 register, <clears throat> the, and then I put the timer into up mode, it will count from zero up to 16384 and roll over and then start over. And it will continually do that forever. But more importantly is when it rolls over, I will get a CCIFG flag. And I can use that flag to trigger an interrupt. And that's what we're going to do. Okay, so our settings are kind of the same as before. We got to choose it. We got to set up the timer, choose the clock, leave the divider 
the first two stage dividers at one so that we don't impact it. That gives me a 32K clock to the timer. I do need to change the mode to up, which is going to be a different setting than we've done before, which was continuous. And then I need to come in here and I need to initialize CCR0. And then I need to configure the interrupts for CCI0. And then I need to write an interrupt service routine. And now this is going to use a different vector because we're not using overflow. We're using CCR0. Okay, let us begin. So that's our task. Here we go. All right, let's fire up a little uh, code composer for the day. So file new CCS project. And we're going to go ahead and say <clears throat> we're still in assembly. We're still doing timers. Um, but this time let's do compare CCR0 and we'll empty only. Okay, it's working, it's working, it's working. Okay, <clears throat> coming down here to the main loop and we are going to have our knit little code. So we're going to use LED1, so let's go ahead and set that up. So bit set uh, dot B, 8-bit operation because we're using the ports and those are treated as 8-bit if you use the names P1 through P6. And so the first thing I do is I set the set P1 bit zero to output and that's LED one. Okay. And then let's go ahead and set the initial value to zero. So let's go bit clear dot B pound bit zero. And then that is the P1 out. So then LED off initially. Okay. And then let's turn on the digital IO system. So I do, I clear the uh, lock LPM five bit in the P power module five control zero register. So this is turn on digital I O. Okay, so these three instructions right here set up my LED and it's always kind of a good idea to kind of comment that. So let me do uh, set up LED. Okay, now let's set up the timer. So let's set up the timer and we'll do B zero. And I'm gonna come over here first and foremost, remember, you have to, the recommended programming sequence is you clear the timer out by writing a one to the TBCLR bit. And then that resets the timer. So the timer's at zero. We also, uh, we also then get the default values for counter and mode, counter length and mode. We're gonna use the default value of 16, but here we go. So I'm gonna do a bit, bit set, 16 bit operation because the configuration registers are 16 bit. And I do CBL at TB, <laughs> TB clear. And then I do, this is in the control register. So TB zero, that's how I tell it it's zero in CTL. So this is gonna be clear timer. Okay, so let's see that TB clear. Okay, good. <clears throat> now we're gonna do, we need to choose the clock. So let's choose the A clock. So let's go bit set dot W and then we're going to use the mask T B S S E L underscore underscore a clock. And that's again in the T B zero CTL register. And that's going to choose a clock as source. Okay. That's fine. And then what we're going to do is we got to put it in the mode. So we're going to put it in up mode. So if I go look in my define or my header file, what I'm going to do is notice that there's a new, definition mask for me or bit mask that is called MC underscore underscore up. <laughs> That's nice because that allows me to put it in the up mode without having to worry about too much. And it's very readable. And that again is in the TB zero CTL register. Okay, so this is put timer into up mode. Okay. And that is, that's the timer. So now I have, I've cleared it all out. I put it in, chosen a clock and I've chosen up. So at this point, you can think about it as I have set up this timer. Now what I need to do is come down here and configure the capture, not capture, compare. So now check this out. I'm going to do setup, compare. Okay. So now check this out. First thing I'm going to do is I need to put 16,384 into this register. This register is called TB0CCR0. And when I can use that name because it's in the, the header file. So I literally do this, move.w pound 16384. And I put that into TB0CCR0. So this is, I'm gonna say setup, compare, and this is important, value. 
Okay, so I just initialized this register. So that's what it's gonna count up to. And since I'm in up mode, it'll count up to it. And when it sees it, it'll uh, you know, raise a flag and then it will roll over and continue counting. So now let's go ahead and do the enable here. So let's enable and interrupt. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do bit set and I wanna do, the interrupt flag is different now because remember, we're not using the, the overflow flag. We're using the uh, compare capture interrupt flag. So we're using this flag and this interrupt. So it's a different interrupt. So the flag luck, or the interrupt local interrupt is luckily defined for me as CCIE as a bit mask within the header file. And so then I go here and this is in the, now here's a new control register. This is TB0 CCTL0. So this register right here is the configuration register for the this capture register. So notice that it's it has TB0, so that's how you tell what timer system you're using. We're using B0, and it is CCTL0. So it's the capture compare control register zero. So that's what tells it that it's CCR0, okay, right here in timer B. So right here, this is gonna be local enable for, CC, for CCR0 in TB0, okay? All right, now that's a local enable, so let's do uh, global enable. So global enable, and of course that is for all maskable interrupts, but since we only are doing the local for this CCR0, we should be good. And now I wanna clear that flag. I'm gonna clear that flag so that I know it's cleared. CCIFG, notice that's a different flag, but it still is in the TB0 CCTL0 register. So I clear CCIFG flag. Okay, that is ready to roll. So at this moment, I've got my LED set up, I've got my timer configured, and I've set up my compare event, and now I can do a main loop that doesn't do anything but jump main, and now what I would need to do is I need to write myself an interrupt service routine to handle when this event occurs. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this and this is where my ISRs are. And I'm gonna come down here and let's give it a label. You always need an address, address label. So let's do ISR to denote that it's an interrupt service routine, TB0, CCR0. So that's descriptive. It tells me, okay, you're doing, this isn't an overflow. This is a capture compare or a compare more likely. And let's do this. We need to toggle LED one. So as always, we'll do an XOR.B and that is on bit zero in the P1 out register. So this is toggle LED one. And then what do we need to do? Well, we got to clear the flag for sure. So I luckily have that copied and pasted. And then I go ahead and return from interrupt. Now I'm almost done, but the only trick is that when this flag is raised and the interrupt, interrupt fires, we need to provide where the starting address of the interrupt service routine is. So I'm gonna copy that label and I do it down here. Now remember, this is a different vector. And I go look that up and I look in my table and I discover that it's that it's vector uh, dot int 43. And you go, how did you find that? How did you find that? Well, if I scroll way back and I look at this uh, vector table here, excuse the flashing, but Here's where it is. It is CCIFG0, and this is capture compare register zero. It is, it's at address FFF8, but it's dot int 43, FFF8, it's int 43. So that's a different register. This is a different vector than the overflow. So that's what, that's why we're using dot int 43, okay? And so I can come over here and I can see TB0, CCR0, uh, vector. And what do I put there? I go ahead and put the interrupt service routine. Okay, there it is. Let's go ahead and warm up the compiler here and see if we have any typos we need to fix before we download this and see what happens. Okay, so it's working. It's working. Let me go ahead and get my stopwatch set up here. And now it's, it's half a second. So it, it should be pretty it should be accurate. I mean, it shouldn't be like just way, way off. We should be able to see this. Okay, here I go. So I got, I got my board plugged in. I got my stoplight. Here's LED one right here. And I'm going to run this and see what happens. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so it's blinking. Life is good. Uh, and it's, how fast is it blinking, right? Well, who knows? Let's, I'm going to hit start as soon as it, as it comes on, and we'll just do kind of as best we can. So if it's going on and off every half a second, that means it should be like literally like 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007. If you look at the seconds changing, this is, this is very accurate. Now, it's not going to be perfect because, the, you know, we don't know that the crystal A clock is exactly 32K, but look how accurate that is. That's far more accurate than using the timer overflows and allowing it to just do a two to the N, you know, course, cal course de determination. We actually are down to within like one count of the timer system. So <laughs> you did it. Congratulations. That is it. As always, remember, support my channel by subscribing and see ya.